It's been a great pleasure to introduce uh, this first speaker of the year, uh, Rebecca Matheny, with uh, Louis, Downtown Louisville Partnership. Uh, Rebecca has been uh, the executive director since 2014, and I want to read what uh, Mayor Pitcher said when she was appointed. Rebecca has been involved in every major downtown project from the Young Center to New Lose Development. She has a deep passion to grow the city's core and make it even more vibrant, and there's every reason she will make a great lead. Downtown is critically important to all 750,000 citizens of Louisville. It is the state's largest business park with 7,000, excuse me, 70,000 jobs, and is the center of tourism for our region. With Rebecca as its new leader, the partnership is poised for great growth. I have the great fortune to uh, be in being a fellows with Rebecca. And as a personal note, when she speaks, people listen. They follow her. She has a way about her that uh, people want to get on board with what she's thinking. And uh, I'm excited. I've learned a lot from you in our short uh, four or five months together. I look forward to our project. And uh, everyone, please welcome my good friend Rebecca to the stage. Uh, welcome to you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Off an excellent time. I've almost called him down again. Um, misspoken. I wanted just to really quickly tell you about some things that we have at your seats. Uh, so we have um, two brochures for our loan funds and some of the maps that we do. So please um, use those and uh, please share our loan fund materials with, with folks that uh, could, could, be, uh, could take advantage of that. Um, as Lucas mentioned, I'm the executive director of the Louisville Downtown Partnership, and I want to take a minute and talk about what that is. So we're the, uh, we have for two years been partners in a partnership. Where are my clients? Uh, where are you? Right there. Over here. Over here. Okay. There we go. Is it on? So we're the combination of two organizations, the Louisville Downtown Management District and the Louisville Downtown Development Corporation. And um, our mission, as you can see, is uh, to aid the facilitation and strengthening of commerce, provide maintenance assistance, beautify and enhance streetscapes, improve security and safety, and stimulate high quality development and vitality in Louisville's downtown. So our vision, just slightly different than that, um, is for us to collaboratively develop downtown Louisville into an economic catalyst for all of Louisville and really for the region and to be a vibrant, dynamic urban core recognized for growth and innovation and attractiveness of place. That attractiveness of place is very important because right now in the field of economic development, there's a really strong emphasis on place making. We know that in the future, folks aren't really choosing where to live based on where they want to work. They're really choosing where to, where to be based on the quality of the place. And Louisville Oak, we think, has a particularly strong and vibrant core for that. We're a very authentic place, and that is something that we know will help us uh, attract the workers of the next century. So what we do, on the development, uh, on the LVMD side, um, we are the state's only business improvement district which is an assessment district where, within a certain boundary, property owners pay an additional fee on top of their property tax to provide services. So these are our ambassadors, um, and we provide only enhancement services, so services that are sort of on top of what Metro would usually provide. We're always looking, this is, this is the actual bid itself, so it goes from the river to Jefferson, Floyd to Ninth on the, on the T side, and then on the bottom, Jefferson to York comes on, between 2nd and 7th. We're always looking to expand, and we really are hoping that um, soon we're going to have some good news on that front. We're also looking at developing other business improvement districts, perhaps like in New Loop. Um, so places where an additional level of service is really necessary. So on the clean and safe side, um, this year we, we planted 332 trees, and I want to particularly thank Henry Heiser for his assistance with that. We <laughs> Henry's vision on that has just been a tremendous asset to downtown. Um, we have 191 flower pots that we've been planted, and those are uh, specifically uh, donated to support that program. 37 new tree wells along Maine. We're trying to really work and reduce the heat island effect by making sure that we have a lot of green. I have 16 ambassadors. They work about 27,000 hours. Um, they have removed 6,600 graffiti tags. 
and about 150,000 pounds of trash. So everyone, please pick up those gum wrappers. <laughs> um, cleaning services. And if anyone here uh, is an insurance provider and will give us a policy that will let me get on that vacuum truck, talk to me afterwards. <laughs> right now they won't let me get on it. Um, we do power washing. Uh, we actually, the guys literally hand sweep and then we have um, vacuum services. I mentioned the tree program earlier. This is an example of it. If you see these bags around, these are watering bags. But we, um, we really are in an aggressive mode of adding trees to downtown and adding the right kinds of trees to downtown. Pictures of our flower pot program. Economic development. So on the DDC side, what we're really focused on is uh, economic development and planning. Um, both the physical and, and, and non-physical environment. Um, we really promote public-private partnerships. We have a very translative role, so we, we translate between the public sector and the private sector. Um, I like to say that we speak metro, and that can be useful for folks who don't. We do direct business outreach, um, a lot of technical assistance, so if folks are dealing with a particular problem downtown, we really help them figure out uh, how to avoid most of the negatives of, the, of a bureaucracy. We do have the two loan funds that I mentioned and, and you have brochures for. We also do incubation and expansion efforts. We do a lot of research. Um, if you, we do a breakfast every year called the State of the Downtown where we really look at demographic and economic data. Um, we we work with the University of Louisville to compare our downtown to peer cities so that we know how we're doing uh, in, in uh, sort of facing our competition. We do a lot of on-the-ground direct research. We, we track everything in downtown as it's being built and, and the level of investment, everything down to do, do, which restaurants have party rooms. So, uh, and that information is free and available to the public and the businesses. Um, I, I like to think that we're very supportive of our commercial real estate community because we, they use our information for a lot of things. We've also been working with IQS uh, on qualitative measures. So we have really tried to focus on how citizens experience downtown. What, what are the challenges, things we can work on, and what makes people feel comfortable here, um, and also have worked with the opinions of both downtown businesses, and then we've looked, we've, we've gone out and talked to suburban businesses to see why, what the challenges to them are in terms of, of relocating to the urban core. I mentioned our loan funds. Um, so we have two, the Downtown Housing Assistance Fund and the Downtown Commercial Loan Fund. The Housing Assistance Fund has essentially had money in every major housing development in downtown and some of the edge neighborhoods since its inception about 15 years ago. The commercial loan fund is new. Uh, we've had two loans with that, including in Davis, and those have been very successful. And those are very targeted. They're sort of mezzanine debt financing, but we, we knew that we needed to, to give people an edge up. Downtown's more expensive. It's more complex to develop, so how can we help? Project management. Um, we do implementation of uh, plans that we do, and we also do improvement of targeted areas. So you might have noticed that we have new sidewalks on 4th Street between um, 4th Street Lab and Broadway, and that's an ongoing project. We just finished um, Guthrie Street, taking out the last vestige of the 70s pedestrian mall, the very last brick I have at my office. Um, I was there for the beginning, I was there for the end. Um, I was shorter at the beginning. Uh, Yulu uh, streetscape project. We have a big streetscape improvement. Um, it's about to happen in Yulu. I'll show some pictures in a bit. We're really excited about this one. It's, it's very focused on sustainability and it's also focused on some new biking facilities that we haven't seen in town and really trying to fit that neighborhood. All of our projects are very relational to where they are. Um, one of the first projects uh, DDC was involved in was the West Main streetscape. And as you walk down West Main, notice the detail, the heavy, the very incredible detail there. The tree surrounds are walking sticks that relate to the businesses that were there. And if you look at the brick pattern, the bricks come off the columns on those great cast iron facades. So um, we, we really try and make all of our projects very relative to where they are. And um, we are also currently working on Whiskey Row Streetscape and trying to get the sidewalk open between first and second on the north side of Main Street. It will happen in my lifetime. It will happen in your lifetime. It's happening now. So I'm really excited about, about that project. Marketing, communication, and events. So we do a number of things around this. And one thing we do is support events. So if you have uh, an event that you're doing downtown and you need to figure out permitting or, or who your part natural partners might be, we do a lot of that. Um, and we really try to communicate with the public when there are walks and runs. Um, 
and we do direct visitor and business marketing. One of our most successful projects recently, which we did with City Collaborative, is the resurface project. So the there's a picture of the before of what those facades that were to be part of the museum row looked like before resurfaced. And then the lower picture is resurfaced. That's the first edition that was this fall, and we just wrapped up um, resurfaced the bourbon edition, which was very, very fun, but almost killed all of us. <laughs> um, we, we partner a lot with the Convention and Visitors Bureau and Sports Commission to make sure that when there are large conventions, they're getting supported and they're getting the best things in our community, but also that there we're mitigating issues from those things. Um, we also work with the Community Branding Project to try and make sure that our, our message is, is related to the overall Possibility City campaign. We've had a lot of great success. Um, that effort, if you see, you know, like for the Manliest City, um, a lot of those articles are really a direct out, outcome of that effort. On the planning and urban design side, um, we are responsible for the downtown master plan. And Louisville is very interesting in the kind of zoning that we have. It's a very layered zoning, form-based zoning, as opposed to a zoning um, that, that tells you really specifically this has to be 10 feet from another. It's, it's very contextual. Part of that is downtown master plan. So every 10 years, we do a master plan for downtown. We just completed one uh, about a year ago, and it's currently going through Metro Council for approval. Uh, we also do connectivity studies. So when there is a big project, we're working on one currently to look at the Omni and the Convention Center and what's going on there. Um, and we'll, then we'll do micro studies, like Kindred Plaza is a micro study, so where we look at something very specific. But again, to try and, and accentuate the positive and mitigate the negative. So the current downtown master plan that's winding its way through Metro Council looked at a couple of areas. We looked at uh, business development and what the next 10 years are going to look like in terms of business development for downtown. That was a lot of great news. The kinds of businesses that we expect to be the drivers of the economy for the next 10 years have a great overlap with the kinds of businesses that are generally located in the urban core. Housing, great news on the housing front. Um, we did a housing market study just for the CBD, so, the central, so from 9th to 65 and basically from Broadway to the river. And just in that zone alone, we really feel like there can be an absorption of about 2,500 units over the next 10 years. So with currently there are about 800 announced units. Um, that's a mix of in the CBD and out of the CBD. We're starting to really see that momentum and I think we're gonna see a lot of great projects um, coming up. We really feel like the edge neighborhoods surrounding us are extremely important, so we pay a lot of attention to Phoenix Hill, we pay a lot of attention to Butchertown, um, Sobro. Nulu is essentially now part of our downtown footprint, and then off to the west, looking at Portland and East Portland and really trying to support efforts in Russell. So in, in addition to our, our main course of business, we do reach outside. DDC's boundaries are much larger than the boundaries of the of the downtown management district in that bid. We really go to 22nd, and we go all the way to the home of the innocents and up to, to Broadway and at Baxter. So we have a pretty big footprint. So the other the next thing that we looked at really was urban form and connectivity. I was talking about the edge neighborhoods, and then uh, we concentrated. The last plan had set out 12 really great principles, like 24/7 downtown that we didn't um, really redress because they are just as true now um, as they were. And so we really looked instead at, at where are the neighborhoods, the natural neighborhoods in downtown and what do those need to grow? Because there's a truism in, in economic development and in planning that you build off strong edges. You, know, you can't plop something in the middle of nowhere. You really have to build off something that's already existing. Um, we had extremely extensive community process, including uh, one of I think Louisville's first uh, online really aggressive civic engagement activities, which was um, really terrific to see. So besides the five neighborhoods, also one waterfront. Talk about that in a second. So the five water, uh, the five neighborhoods, West Main and Market, and really seeing <coughs> moving downtown westward towards Portland, and, and really trying to expand on the west the way that we have seen downtown expand on the east towards Nulu. Um, Fourth Street, which is sort of a, a, a better better way to describe that would be uh, how do we tie the KIC, the Kentucky International Convention Center, I always speak in code, um, and the new Omni project, and how do we infill all of that and tie it to 4th Street and, and really try and, and get energy on 5th as well. So that's look at, looking at lots of those. One of the largest challenges in that area is surface parking lots. 
Does somebody want to guess what percentage of downtown um, developable land is either surface or structured parking? 30. Yeah, it's a lot. Now that, now, that sounds terrible, but that's actually pretty typical of a Midwestern city. But it, that is really something where that's a challenge. It's a challenge for pedestrians, it's a challenge for development. And those, those, those properties are very um, out of whack economically in terms of, of what, they, what they generate in income versus what you could, could get for. So we're working on, on that as a challenge. There are several of you in this, in this room that will be getting phone calls about your surface parking lots. <laughs> so on East Main and Market, um, a lot of good activity going on there, particularly around bourbon attractions and, um, and just the arena energy, and so supporting that. Nulu, uh, obviously really exciting area, a lot of opportunity for housing there, and a lot of opportunity for infill, a lot of, a lot of empty spaces in Nulu. The medical center is a little bit of a new focus for us. Um, there had been a medical uh, development corporation, um, but that is one of, as you know, the most fast-paced changing industries that there is. And so really looking at the assets that are in the medical center and what's next for those assets, you know, as hospitals change and, and what happens in them change, what's next for the medical center. So that's kind of a, an exciting new frontier for us. Um, Ohio River's Bridges Project is sort of an example I'm going to use of linking the master plan to ongoing development, which we'll talk about next. So, huge project, and as you can see it emerging, you can see what enormous physical impact it's gonna have. So in many cases, those overpasses, I'm not gonna look at Tyler Allen the entire time I'm talking about the Tyler River for this project. Um, in some cases, those are doubling in size, and so one of our big challenges moving forward, I've known him since he was a baby, so I can say that. Um, is to try and, and take what might be a negative and make it into a positive. We, we see a lot in, in all over the country, the Highline being the most overused example, but ways people are engaging infrastructure and really changing infrastructure from something that is, is negative to positive. So that's one of, of the challenges and one of the things that we have in the master plan that I'm very excited about. So development update. There's a lot going on out there. I was just in Nashville and it's exciting to think about how many cranes we're gonna have. Um, I, I, I'm not going to leave here today telling you that driving is going to be easy in downtown anytime that, and that's a good thing. I'm here to tell you that's a really good thing. Um, the red here are projects that are underway, and the blue um, are announced projects. And when I say announced projects, we don't just, if somebody sends out a press release, the announced projects that are on this map are solid announced projects. So we have about $1.161 billion worth of activity going on in downtown right now. That does include the Bridges Project. Um, it's part of that $964 million in public money. But there's also $197 um, million in private money and another almost $800 million in announced, again, pretty solid projects. Um, one of the things that we are doing, because there's so much going on, in addition to that Omni Convention Center Connectivity Studies, we're really trying to look at how to mitigate your negative experience of all of this. How do we, how do we take all of those projects that are ongoing and um, do traffic mitigation and even lay down mitigation? Where are all of them going to put their stuff? And really do, trying to address that for the first time in a very comprehensive way. Um, another struggle that we have is in terms of communication. It's really hard to communicate with people. You know, we'll um, send out an email about walks and runs that are happening downtown. And we'll get people who say, well, I didn't know about that. And, you know, well, we sent, we sent the email is not an adequate answer. Because if people aren't able to manage the information they're giving, you have to figure out a way to um, give them information in a way they can process and manage. And so that's a ne another next big challenge for us. I want to talk about a couple of the exciting things that are going on. So the Bourbon District is one of our next big projects. Um, and the Bourbon District is is meant to, in a physical way, but also in a vernacular way, uh, tie all of our bourbon assets together. In downtown, that's an actual kind of physical experience, so pretty much it's focused from Angel's Envy to Peerless at 10th Street, so Angel's is going in at I-65, Market, and then up, um, I mean, I'm sorry, Main, and then up 4th Street to Jim Beam, um, there's a new distiller going in in New Lou. So as these grow, one of the things that we're looking at is how you can develop a comprehensive system of visual clues for tourists and, and those of us alike of, of historic assets or, 
or working distilleries or other assets like restaurants on the urban bourbon trail that could be used metro wide but we're going to start that with the bourbon district downtown we also are struggling with or it's an opportunity right um with how you make bourbon uh something that is family friendly um, and how you, how you make it so it's not an overwhelming experience for many, many of our tourists. We, we tend to get a lot of religious groups, et cetera. How do, how do you take that great asset that we all enjoy in one way and make it something that folks can enjoy in another? So working on that. I mentioned the new streetscape project. This has been, um, this has been a very long planning process, very neighborhood driven. Um, this is, uh, we are going to be uh, trying to narrow right now on Market Street. You know, you pretty much have to run across it at a dead sprint to get across. Um, so this project does a couple of things. One thing it does is it, it does what we call bump out. So it takes the sidewalk further into the intersection so the pedestrian path that crosses is shorter. Um, it has a very strong sustainability component, so stormwater management. Um, but then it also has Louisville's first cyclo track. So if you look at the, the blue, it's a separated right bike lane so that bikes are completely separated from <laughs> Mark's, Mark's in. So we're really excited. This is supposed to go into construction early next year. Um, we're still working through, because there is some bridges money in that, we're still working through a number of significant challenges in terms of getting the money into the funnel. Upcoming projects, lots going on downtown. It's the Kentucky International Convention Center. If you haven't heard, it's gonna be closed for two years while they revamp it. Um, when, when it's revamped, we'll go from uh, somewhere in the mid 70% of the total convention market that we could compete for to the mid 90s. It's a huge uptick and it also is a huge change in the kind of convention, which as someone downtown, I'm really excited about. So we'll get, we'll, we'll get a, a higher level of convention there. Um, the Omni Project, which uh, was announced a bit ago, um, a mix of, of residential and hotel, so I was just in Nashville there yesterday looking at how their Omni works and how it fits with their downtown. Um, Kindred and their new building on 4th Street. Uh, we, are, we are moving the Derby clock shortly um, into storage to make way for that. Um, unless someone has a great spot for the Derby clock. And so I'm taking all suggestions on that too. Because 27 by 40 and uh, it could be an asset to, to your yard or <laughs> other publicly viewable space. I keep telling Sheldon Schaefer I'm going to put it in his yard if he writes one more article about the Derby Club. <laughs> so uh, we've got the old Forester experience coming, uh, and then there's a great new project at the Starks building that's been announced. It's a mix of, of um, residential and hotel. Um, so that's, there's a lot going on. And I'd be happy to take any questions. Especially about New Loop, how are the uh, neighbors? We are talking about the changing of the street, narrowing the street. I'm assuming they're all happy with that. Are they mixed? Is it tough to read? You can please all the people all the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, actually, that project's a very interesting project um, because it actually came out of a neighborhood effort for beautification in the neighborhood long before we got involved in doing the connectivity study and looking for the money to make those changes, the neighborhood had kind of dictated the elements that they wanted. Um, it may be, for some of them, a bit of a case of be careful what you wish for. But generally speaking, they've been, been really positive. They just wanted to have it. And so we all do. Susan? I'm Susan Smith, the Executive Director at Guardian Care Services. And um, when I moved back here five years ago uh, from another city uh, who had urban enterprise uh, areas, I was interested in whether Louisville had tax credits for homeowners who lived and worked in um, an urban enterprise area. And I could never get an answer to that question. Could you talk about any available tax credits for people who will live and work in a given developmental area? I certainly can, and the answer is no. Oh. <laughs> well, you shouldn't have them. <laughs> point, point well taken, and that is actually in the housing study. One of the things that we, we in the master plan uh, have is, is a different, you know, Louisville has, not Louisville, excuse me, because it's really not a Louisville issue, it's a Kentucky issue. There's a very limited number of tools in the toolbox in terms of whether it's an credits to an individual or credits to a developer. 
and, and so I don't like giving the answer no, but, but the answer is there are not currently those. Well, if you need a drum beater. I will, I, there we go. I'll always take a drum beater. Keith? Keith Knapp, the Crystal Care Communities, and I'm looking across the room, and I'm going to bet a dollar to a donut that Harriet <clears throat> has the same question, so go ahead, Harriet. Okay. Well, my question is about public housing downtown. Oh, we've done... Go ahead. I got, I got another question. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> we do have a great tag team. But if you ask about Humana, that's okay too. Um, my question is about public housing. And maybe Tim Barry would be a good speaker for us. But they've done something with Liberty Green. But you have Dosker Manor there, which as we all know is not public housing for the elderly. It is the first and third highest call for crime rate in the city. Um, it has a lot of drug dealing in it. I don't have to go on. But what kinds of plans are there for that big, um, that big issue right in the middle of the area? And have you been talking to public housing about that? Yeah, actually, what's interesting about that is my, my first career was in public housing. So, and I worked for the Housing Authority when I first came back here. So Tim and I have had a lot of robust um, <laughs> conversations about that. Tim Berry, by the way, is a, a very unique asset to our community because He's one of the few public housing executive directors in the country that does not hate poor people. Right. Um, yeah, it's very counterintuitive, but it's true. And so he, um, he and I talked about that. Dusker Manor is not a good situation. It's never a good situation when you have economically disadvantaged people housed in a way that no one else is housed in the community. It's always a disaster. So he and I had a lot of discussions about how do you reuse Dosker. Those are ongoing discussions. We continually look for opportunities around that. I also think that Blanton House and, and the 8th Street building, yes. you know, they're little islands, you know, how can we fill in around those? And as part of the Beecher Choice Neighborhoods conversation, we're starting to have some of those conversations as well. Terrific. Yeah. But my cell phone is in the Dosker Manor housing complex somewhere, so, you know, when we get to we can find that. it. <laughs> well, what I want to ask you about is with all the planning and uh, coming forward with the plan, has there been any discussion about how Louisville can get on the map with the Louisville Health Organization standards for aging friendly city? Bowling Green's already done it, Berea's already done it, and, and we're just sort of languishing in, well, that's an interesting idea. But we got the corporate headquarters for so many aging services companies here, but a lot of the folks that live with us in the downtown can't get across the street before the light changes. Right. Yeah, that's, that's a, um, so it's in terms of the WHO standard, we really haven't. That's an interesting, very interesting idea. Um, and I think that we should look at that. Um, what we have done is very aggressively as we do redevelopment of streetscape, and this is particularly true when we, when we did the Newman Streetscape, we did a, a walk and roll with the Center for Accessible Living um, because it, it's really silly to put an infrastructure that isn't, isn't reality-based in terms of the population. That's part of why we did those bump outs, and they're as extreme as they are. Um, so, you know, that is something that whenever we do infrastructure projects, we really try and look at those issues. Well, I think there's a tendency to assume that all old people are also poor, and that's not correct. And so, when you talk about economic development on any corridor, to assume that those folks are community treasures is a false choice. So. Just planting seeds. I'll see before you get out of the room. Well, I know plenty of poor people that are community treasures too. So. Uh, questions related to the uh, local option. Um, you know, all this great stuff that's going on in downtown. Um, kind of the general convention is wisdom thinking is that with that option, it would accelerate. I'm just kind of curious on a scale of one to ten. One, it's not relevant. Five, yeah, it helped. Ten, it would be you know a godsend. How important would that tool be to take Louisville to? The next level or accelerating development is already going on. I mean, um, I, I think it's a 10 in part because when you deal with the economic reality of Kentucky, um, there are not a lot of other options in terms of, of major spends for infrastructure or, or major projects. So, you know, I, I think it's an extraordinarily important issue. Rebecca, I'm sure you'll be up here after the meeting. We can, uh, if anyone has any more questions, thank you again for coming.